Hi guys, just wanted to give people a quick rundown on this fantastic Raspberry Pi floppy interface designed by Mauricio Ramondo. I hope I've got name, your name pronounced correctly there buddy. Um, what we've got here is a interface and software that runs on the Raspberry Pi that you can build for just a couple of quid. It connects directly to the floppy interface on pretty much any Amiga computer um, and allows you to fill the SD card on the Pi up with um, ADF floppy images uh, and play them as though they were running from floppy disk which is fantastic so I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of, uh, of how that works and, and my attempt at doing that the design and software can be downloaded from his website I'll put that in the info, that's amigadrive.blogspot.it um, so here we go, I'll just fire this up and show you guys how it works So we power up as normal, we get a bit of uh, LED activity on the floppy there. The Amiga thinks it's booting up from a real floppy drive. And we get to the disk selection screen. And what you can do here is all the ADFs that you've got on your SD card are listed there. And you can just go on there and select any you want. So what I'm going to do here is, just get rid of that, is select the workbench disk if I can find it. Nope, don't want that. Don't want super funk. Let's have a look at the workbench, where are we? Who remembers these horrible ball mouse? So we've got workbench 1.3. Now this device actually emulates two floppy drives for the Amiga, DF4 and DF1, and with a couple of switches you can change discs at any time. So what I'm going to do is put Workbench in to begin with and then put a couple of discs in addition to that so we can flick through them. So let's put that in DF1 and just put another couple of discs in and we'll flick between them and see what happens. So let's put that in there. Cross out in there. And another world. No, we'll go with Arcanoid. Okay, so what this will do now, um, DF4 being the master drive, it will work, boot the Workbench 1.3 disk, hopefully. And then using the switches here, allow me to switch through the different disks. So here we go. Let's hit play up here. So what's happening right now is the uh, Raspberry Pi is loading those images off the SD card into its memory. We do have an LED on the device under here flickering away showing that there's disk activity going on. There we go. And because it's mounting eight images it does take a few seconds. And there we go. Amiga's going to boot up now. So we can see we've got activity showing there. Sorry for the poor quality images coming off my mobile phone. So it's a bog standard Amiga 500. No hard disk, no nothing. The floppy disk drive isn't even connected. The only, uh, the only disk input is coming from this Raspberry Pi. This interface is built following the schematic that's provided on his website. Uh, literally just a couple of quid's worth of components thrown onto a prototype board with an old floppy cable to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. So it's an absolute no-brainer. Unfortunately it still runs at the same speed as a floppy drive it appears as well so we know how slow those were. So the Amiga does think it's running from a floppy drive. So there we go, so we've booted into Workbench and as you can see because we've got two virtual disks we've got the Workbench showing which is the disk we've booted from and Real 1 which if I remember correctly is disk 1 of the game Wings which I mounted into DF1. So what I'm going to do now is I've got two buttons here. One of these activates a disk swap and what that will do is it will move both virtual drives onto the next disk image 
Uh, the other button stores any data that has changed. So if you make any changes to any of the image of the disk images, you hit that button and it writes that back to the image on the SD card. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the button for disk change, and we should get two new disk icons appear. The workbench icon will stay there because that's the disk we've booted from. So I'm just going to hit that now and see what happens. So one's disappeared and we should get two new icons. Oh, there we go, we've got Wings Disk 1 and Wings Disk 2. That's Wing Commander if I actually. So as you can see, if I can reach the mouse here. We could do whatever we wanted with these. If we had another external disk drive, we could then copy that back to a physical disk if we wished. Um, or absolutely anything. So there's not much interest in there, so let's hit the button again. See what happens. Okay, so we've got disk one of cross out and a non-DOS disk. So that's a custom written disk manager, so we can't see that. So one more time. And there's the Arcanite disk and Zach McCracken disk one. So, like I said, we've got one button that changes to the next disk image and one button that stores any change. If we press both buttons together, like so, the disks disappear and we get two unreadable disks appearing, like so. And what that does is that puts us back onto the disk manager screen, so if we reboot the Amiga, just using the normal key combination, rather than it booting Workbench again, it should take us back to the disk selection screen. And there we have it. So, there we are, Amiga Drive running from a Raspberry Pi, all the information available on the website, and I'll put that in the description. So, there we go.